Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly representing Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking to two special people that are involved with PAPA. And they're going to tell us all about what that is and the, the new projects that are coming to our community and the ways that you uh, that are viewing this program can become involved in helping others. So I'd like to turn it over now and introduce my wonderful guest, Rabbi Lee Haskind, who's the president of PAPA, which is the Peekskill Area Pastors Association. Right, which kind of expands a little bit out of Peekskill, yes, I must it does, say. It does. Right. And Reverend Dr. Ron Pankey, who is vice president of yes. PAPA. And you actually, your congregation is in Yorktown. Yorktown, right next to the Wilkins Fruit Farm. Right. Right. And Rabbi, yours is on Route 6? It's right on Route 6 near the Beach Shopping Center. Right. Yeah. So tell us about uh, this ministerial association from Peekskill that is, that is broader than that. How, how did it start? What's its mission? Well, let me tell you about the mission first. Um, it really has two main focuses. Um, one is kind of internal. We provide a lot of support for each other and it's, it's very collegial. And uh, I think that for a lot of people, that's, uh, it's very important because clergy have a kind of a, a different role in the community. And uh, it's great for us to be able to share with each other. We meet once a month. And it really gives us a chance to learn from each other, let our hair down, uh, learn from each other's experience, and share uh, a number of different uh, experiences together. Uh, the other focus is really doing uh, projects in the community that enhance the community. Um, and we really have an awful lot of projects that are uh, going on. Some of them have been for many years, 20 years or more. Some of them are, are brand new. So uh, it's mm -hmm. very exciting and it, it's mm -hmm. an active time um, in Papa. Mm -hmm. When did Papa start? Um, Any idea? <laughs> well, we have some idea. Okay, um, sometimes it, things just happen. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been said, I mean, neither one of us was here at the beginning. Um, it's been said that our history is over a hundred years old, which I think oh is not. Goodness. I think it's not. Oh, you think it's I, not? I think okay. it's about fifty okay. or so years old. Mm -hmm. um, but that's still that's a long time. It, it is a long mm -hmm. time, and from its beginning, uh, Papa has been very involved in the community. One of uh, the early projects was actually starting uh, what became the Jam Peak Shelter, CHOP, uh, caring mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. homeless of Peekskill. Um, people from Papa were the ones who really um, started that um, and followed it up uh, until we had adequate fund until it had adequate funding and actually got it on the map and mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful that we have that uh, facility in our community and we continue to, to work together. I would assume you, now you say that too. I, I live in Osnane, and you know the minute I, I, just as we moved in in about six, 1969, um, there was an organization started through the Interfaith Council for Action, and a lot of that was about um, people having great needs. Um, it, it did go into housing, but I think it was more trying to take care of the poor. Um, in whatever way, food and so on. So maybe, did, I would assume maybe many of these started through a project that, that developed. Probably in some cases uh, it did. There are, of course, as you say, ministeriums all over the country. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that they're a very important part of the community. And those communities that don't have active ministeriums, I would say probably are, are the poorer for it. Um, mm -hmm both in terms of the clergy people not having a place to share, which really gives us, we're finding it a tremendous amount of uh, insight into what we do and support. We learn mm -hmm. from each other and we, we, we help to give each other strength too. Um, right, because you, you, you kind of isolate it exactly. as the yes. head of a religious community. You really are. Right. Um, I mean, you have your congregation and so on, but um, as to dealing with uh, financial issues, community issues, uh, the issues that are that percolate up, whether it's drugs or whatever within your parishioners, or I, I don't know. There's just so many things that I guess you have to think about, and it's nice to have somebody to be able to um, give give their take on it also. I well, within assume. Papa, we have such a diverse group of uh, clergy, mm -hmm. uh, but we find that even though there's that great diversity, there is that great commonality. 
And uh, we share, uh, as Rabbi said, in ways that I had not experienced in ministerial groups uh, prior to coming to this area and being involved with Papa. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a breath of fresh air because it's not just meeting uh, around a, a table to eat, but we're also heavily involved in activities. And it's a very active group of uh, uh, ministers, uh, much more so than I had been around before. Mm -hmm. is, is that also uh, in relationship to very active um, churches or synagogues? That It seems like there, there's a lot of activity uh, in this area in, in that way. I, I Maybe think, that reflects I, I it. I think it could be connected partly to that, yes. Um, and also because really as clergy people we can only do what our congregations are comfortable mm -hmm. with us doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that our, our congregations are very involved. There are a number of uh, congregations connected to Papa who uh, have their own food pantries, who do that, that work themselves. Um, a lot of our people volunteer at various projects that Papa is involved in. Um, and so I, I think that that's probably also true, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I had gone a number of weeks ago to a presentation that you were both at um, and talking about the, the problems in our country, uh, about people not having enough food, and it was such a compelling presentation, uh, a movie, a presentation on, on the needs that we have. And, and, and I, I know from the uh, food banks, uh, and the local food pantries that more and more people are coming uh, that just just don't have the income. Either they've, they've lost their job or they, their job doesn't bring them that much revenue or they haven't had an increase in pay or whatever it is. And, um, you know, they have those needs. And it's just, that was such a compelling uh, film. And I'm I know you, you, you presented it, so you right. felt that way, and you, you thought that you would have an impact on those, those that had seen it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the film, A Place at the Table, really shows that, um, among other things, hunger and poverty in America is not even a lower class phenomenon anymore. It's really a middle mm -hmm. class phenomenon, and uh, really some people would consider it uh, one of the significant scandals of the wealthiest country in the world that we have this whole amazing and growing uh, group of working poor people who are working full time, very hard, and can't put enough food on their tables. And that's why we're seeing this tremendous increase in demand, as you said, at food mm -hmm. pantries all over the country. Um, what we wanted to do was, number one, to raise up that issue, because there are different ways to address it. And, we're trying to address it right now in two ways, locally. But one of the points that the film makes as well is that it has a political component. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, there's been a lot of concern and frustration in the country about uh, the way that Washington has not been moving and not necessarily been taking care of people in need in our country. So uh, our, our immediate effort is not a an overtly political one, but it's impossible to avoid that component. Um, but what we're involved in right now is a two-pronged approach to provide more food uh, for people in our community. Um, we talked a lot about the amount of food that is prepared at schools and at restaurants and left over in supermarkets and really usually goes to waste. And we decided we really wanted to do something and the term that this has been going by is food rescue. Um, mm -hmm. I was very impressed by an article I had seen in the newspaper a few years ago about a group called County Harvest uh, that was started in Pelham by one person. And it has grown and continued to thrive. It is 100% volunteer. There's not a single mm -hmm. paid employee. And, and what do they do? What they do is they contact all of these kinds of places that have very good, wholesome, leftover food that mm -hmm. can be eaten and is healthy, and they make arrangements to pick up the food and deliver it to any of a number of agencies that dispense food. And those agencies exist already. Mm -hmm. in places like food pantries and local mm -hmm. uh, soup kitchens, and of course we have places like that right mm -hmm. in our community and in the area. And what they do is they coordinate volunteers to go to one place to pick up food 
and take it directly to an agency and deliver it. So the food isn't stored. There's no concern about mm -hmm. ha having to right. take care Basically, of it. Basically, it's consumed pretty much right away if, right. It's, if, it's, if it's not something that's dried or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Um, so since we started conversations with County Harvest maybe a half year ago or so, um, they've already uh, started uh, working with volunteers in our area who already mm -hmm. are picking up food and delivering it. And they will be increasing the number of places uh, all the time that they can uh, get food from and deliver it to. Mm -hmm. And we're always uh, interested in getting more volunteers. This sounds like a great place for somebody in this community to become involved. So I know we're going to put numbers on places right. that they can call. Right. Uh, so somebody might just say, because I remember hearing uh, this individual that had come from Southern Westchester talk right. about, you know, it's really not all that long. You you make arrangements as long as you have a place that says we will give you our donate donate the food. Right. You go pick it up, take it right to another place. Right. It could it's be about like an, an hour. Exactly. Right? It's about an hour. That's what they say. Right. And, and even if you can't do it on a regular basis, they always need people to fill in at the last moment for somebody's ill or or mm -hmm. you know, emergencies come up. So you don't even have to make a long-term, every week commitment. There's a place for anybody who's willing to volunteer. Right. For young moms and dads that are running around with their kids mm -hmm. going to sports games right. in between. Absolutely. <laughs> it's Absolutely. a great pattern. For older people that are home, they could set aside certain times um, you know, that they might, might want to uh, go. And if it's at their supermarket, they can go and shop and then take right. the other and, right. and go off. It, it just seems, it seems like such an easy volunteer program that has such an impact. Yes, it really does. So that's one way that we're working already to increase mm -hmm. the volume of uh, healthy food that's available. Um, I say healthy food because one of the major points in the movie, A Place at the Table, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that uh, exactly because it's so hard to afford uh, the best kinds of healthy food, uh, fresh foods, fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, what people tend to do when they don't have enough money, and this happens a lot with people who are living on uh, food stamps, on SNAP, Mm -hmm. um, is that they buy uh, things that are basically carbohydrates. They buy junk food. And as a result of that, uh, we have this obesity problem in America because mm -hmm. people don't have enough money to buy healthy food. Now, mm -hmm. it's partly because people don't have healthy habits, but it's largely because they don't have enough money. Right. Um, well, we've also found that in the schools because if, as we've tried to work so hard on getting the lunch programs or breakfast programs in our schools to have healthier food, there is a rise in cost yes. for the families. And then the question is, do the families have enough money to be able to afford that healthy food? And, you know, we're trying, and, and there's really a national, there's a national um, attention on that right now, what we're mm -hmm. feeding our kids in schools. But this, you know, you, 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 I, a lot of our fast food restaurants seem to be putting better food in yes. now, but yes. often you'd see a whole family go in and you don't know how many times they've been in a fast food restaurant. You know, it's fine every once in a while, but if it's an every night activity, if you're not using that better food, then you're, you're as you said, it's a lot of, a lot of, bad calories that are going in there. One of the things Absolutely. that a number of churches in the community have done during the Lenten season was to challenge our people to live eating-wise on what they would get if they were uh, food stamp recipients. And that figures out to roughly $1.60 per person per meal. It, I know. When I heard that in the movie, they were... were I think they'd mentioned yes. it in yes. the movie. Yes. I said, how, how can anybody, I, I think if you tried that, have, have you had anybody in... in I, I did that about did a year you? ago. I, did did it, I didn't okay. do it for Lent, but, right. I, but I did it about a year ago. And that was when I discovered, uh, in my family, we eat uh, mostly uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. We mm -hmm. never eat uh, frozen or cooked. And I discovered that I could really only afford to do that if things were on very deep sale, if I was mm -hmm. extremely mm -hmm. careful and I limited what I could buy. It's extremely difficult, nearly impossible to do it. Um, one of the things that this movie shows is that 
uh, a big reason is the huge amount of uh, subsidies that are given to a small number of agribusinesses. Um, and again, we're entering the political realm, but it's a serious issue because I suspect that if that money were not supporting already very wealthy companies, mm -hmm. um, we would probably have enough money to solve the problem of hunger in America mm -hmm. today. So I think it's worth thinking mm -hmm. about. Robert, when uh, the place at the table, the movie, how, is is it available for people um, to get a copy of? Is, is um, it actually is available on Netflix? On Netflix, and okay. we have a copy which um, we can show. Uh, you know, if, if we're part of the program, because that was the terms mm -hmm. of our license, but we'd be happy to do it. I think um, it's being shown again someplace recently, right? Soon. It, 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 very soon it's going to be shown again at my church, uh, the Yorktown mm -hmm. Church of the Nazarene, mm -hmm. uh, for those people who hadn't been able to see it. And uh, uh, our church, uh, we do Lenten soup suppers during the Lent mm -hmm. season, So, and I love to cook, so I've been the cook. You're right, mm -hmm. making soup for 20 people at $1.60 per person. Boy, excuse me, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> no, almost impossible. It is. Very hard. Almost impossible. And, and there are people out there that, that are always concerned with the food stamp programs and everything that we're giving so much money away. And right. when you think about it, um, you know, as much as we, we, we don't want to have people having to have food stamps, we want everybody to have a very good life. Right. Uh, it, it does provide something to help people There's get through all this. There's abuses in everything, and I'm sure mm -hmm. you know that much better than right. we do. But we can't hold this whole situation captive because there is a small percentage of people who abuse the program. Uh, mm -hmm. Just I would just challenge the people who are listening to this. If you think it's such a great program, cook dinner tonight for your family for $1.60 mm -hmm. per person and mm -hmm. see how well you would do. Mm -hmm. it, it it opened my eyes at that point uh, right. uh, to this this great need uh, that we have before us. Right. And thinking about kids going to bed hungry, for this person, that's when you had me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know. Or I was a former teacher, and I just know if kids come to school and haven't eaten anything, right. they their brains aren't going to work very well. Right. You know, it's it is a substance that we need in our bodies. So um, now you have another. I was hearing about the other adventure yes. that you're getting into, yes. which is like called farming. <laughs> is it <laughs> gardening, farming? We're, 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 it's gone through several different names, but we're calling it gardening at the moment. Okay, gardening. Okay. Uh, and we're we're very excited about this. It's uh, called, it's called the Garden of Hope. Okay. And our church, the Yorktown Church of the Nazarene, we have 15 acres. Now, most of it's trees and hilly, but we have uh, um, a large, flat piece of property that back in the 70s was the area church softball league. Well, it's been 25 years or more since, since anybody you had played, a league. <laughs> uh, played softball there. And uh, we have offered up, if we could get the community to join with us, that we would allow that to be no charge. We would just give it over to the use and create a place where we could raise these fruits and well, not fruits, but vegetables that these people mm -hmm. need but can't afford or it's not available to them. And uh, it's been exciting to watch. We recently had our first volunteers meeting with our two gardeners that are gonna run uh, the program. And we had about 30 people show up Mm -hmm. And uh, families have come together that the family are going to be part of it. So it's been an exciting uh, program to watch the community react in a very positive way mm -hmm. about uh, gardening uh, in our area. So how is that going to I've seen some community type gardening. Um, do, do people, they have, does a family have a plot that they garden, no, the or is way, it just like one big, it's, big it's, garden? It's going to be one big garden, mm -hmm. and uh, as Reverend Pinky said, we're very lucky to have two very experienced uh, expert gardeners mm -hmm. um, who are really in charge of this project. And I think that we're talking about something like 30, over 250 foot long uh, 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 it's, a, it's an acre roses. and a half. Yeah. Right. Oh. It's yeah. an acre and a half, which means it's 300 feet long and mm -hmm. 200 feet wide, and and we could put over 30 rows uh, at 300 feet long 
uh, mm -hmm. in garden and we'll rotate that so we won't plant it all at once mm -hmm. plant a little bit at the beginning and mm -hmm. then a few weeks later plant again mm -hmm. in a few weeks mm -hmm. so that you're always having uh, a harvest coming off of it right so this will um when it, when is it starting we're is hoping it... to have probably our first crop in june i think yes and it'll run okay. probably again. It depends a lot on the weather. We right? get the the let, some of the early lettuces and yes. so on. I think I'm you know some lettuce of a gardener, will be the first but, crop. Right. Uh, green beans. Uh huh. Uh, squash, cucumbers, um, and a discussion of other things. Again, depending on the weather. Our weather has been real um, harsh this year. Right. Uh, but uh, depending on how the weather goes, maybe some corn. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's to f supply that fresh vegetable uh, portion of the di diet that, as the movie made very clear to us, people can't afford mm -hmm. in some of these small towns that are so racked by the community and most of the community on uh, uh, welfare supports and food stamps. The stores don't even have fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm, in them. Mm -hmm. That's really so. Right. so once these are grown, the, I mean, you're going to have to have volunteers do all kinds of things, I yes. guess. Plant the seeds. Put a fence weed, in. Put a fence in. Water. Yes. I don't know. All, all of the above. All yeah. of the above. You know, uh, get the harvest the crops. But the good part is yes. once it once it's harvested, mm -hmm. so we have county harvest to work with to oh, give right. out the food to all the agencies. Right, yeah, they so can do really the distribution. A, exactly. So you don't have to do that part of it. Right. Now, as it's going through the summer, you may have some people that might go on vacation, so yes. you probably need substitute gardeners, Absolutely. don't you? Absolutely. I would think, you know, because... Can we sign are... you up today? Well, <laughs> well I, I, I probably should. I'm, a, I'm a somewhat of a gardener, but I'm okay. into flowers. Right. Um, and we're, those aren't edible, although there are some that there are, are edible. Some. But, yes. but we'll, we'll be happy, really. Anybody mm -hmm. who would like to volunteer will do our best to work their schedule in with our schedule. Right. But this is a learning experience for us because mm -hmm. we haven't done this project before. Um, but the, the two gentlemen who are in charge of the project have worked with volunteers a lot on gardens just for the same purpose. So we'll, mm -hmm, I, I think mm -hmm. we can make it work. And we're excited. Not only did we have this first meeting, but when we showed the movie, we had over 20 people sign up uh, for the gardening mm -hmm. as well. So we're, we're well on our way. Now, where are your volunteers from? Well, they're from all over all the over? area. Uh -huh. Peekskill, okay. Portland, Croton, Yorktown. Putnam Valley, Yorktown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really all from all over. And That's great. Uh, we had we had people jumping up with excitement when we announced that we were starting a garden that night at the right, movie. Right. Yeah, there are people who are really looking forward to doing this. And we want to let your viewers know, you don't have to be a member of any church right. to participate right, in right. this. This is a community effort. Right. So anybody that loves to get dirt under their fingernails right, or, right. or whatever, they're more than welcome to participate in this. Papa has a Facebook page and we'll be putting information on our Facebook page. Uh, so anybody is more than welcome uh, to this. That's we great. are a diverse group, and you don't have to be a member of any faith community to be part right. of this. No, it's just such a wonderful project. So you'll have to keep every, I guess with your face page, you'll keep everybody up to date on, you know, are the radishes doing okay or <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Are there, right. are there certain, is, is your head, are your head gardeners looking at certain kinds of vegetables that they think that, people like more or should have more or you know does that get into it the the nutrition side of it the nutrition and... side gets into yes. it what yes. grows the best right. uh -huh. uh, something like corn it takes more square footage to produce more right. co corn where green beans and squash and mm -hmm. cucumbers mm -hmm. and tomatoes don't need near as much square footage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they're making those decisions even though it's our property, I've made the promise mm -hmm. I'm staying out of it. I'm not mm -hmm. making the decisions. So please don't call and gripe at me. Uh, <laughs> now, who's, who's paying for the plants? Is that a, volunteers are contributing dollars the for the plants? Volunteers are. Papa mm -hmm. will probably be supporting some of that. Um, mm -hmm. There's some grant money that we hope will be coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. So, again, it's a learning process for us. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, right from the pulpit to the garden. Mm -hmm. Right, right. No, Pul it's just a pulpit to garden to table. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a wonderful process. Uh, now you do so many other things. I, I know I um, always attend the Martin Luther King 
Papa event um, in, in tribute to Martin Luther King. And, and I know you're all involved in so many ways with that and other activities that occur. Um, is that, that's all organized by, by Papa pretty much? Well, the, the Martin Luther King uh, project, the, the service, actually mm -hmm. was originally a service for many, many years, over 20 years, uh, that was offered to the community by Mount Olivet Baptist Church mm -hmm. in Peekskill. Mm -hmm. And about six or seven years ago, uh, they reached out to Papa and we began to work on it together. Mm -hmm. uh, this past year, we actually expanded it um, and did a number of service projects in the community the week before uh, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Day. And that was open to anybody who, who wanted to come. And we mm -hmm. also had a pulpit exchange, um, mm -hmm. which was uh, fascinating and, and very exciting for a number of us who switched uh, congregations uh, over that Sabbath, over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, that was very exciting. Yes. Yeah. Um, were your congregants, I mean, did they, did you get good, good vibes from everybody we, we really <laughs> did. There? We really yes. did. Um, there was a snowstorm that Saturday and oh, we still okay. had a number of people who came. My congregation hosted Mount Olivet Baptist Church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. their pastor is a great speaker and mm -hmm. they had I think 30 or 40 of their members came to our congregation. Mm -hmm. I spoke on Sunday morning at his church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, I love getting the uh, feedback from the congregation which is uh, something I don't normally get. Right. And yeah, it was very exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. Now, I know you also, I, Thanksgiving, you're having dinners. Yes, we for do a dinner. Everybody in the community. Right, at the uh, United Methodist Church right downtown in Peekskill. We have a dinner for anybody who would like to come on mm -hmm. the day of Thanksgiving. Uh, we also have this is a little bit of a different direction. It's not about food, but we also offer a uh, Thanksgiving service on the Sunday afternoon, evening, uh, before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, which again is a, a very, very large, well-attended service with a large number of clergy from all over the area. And that really is part of our, our diversity uh, mandate to try mm -hmm. to, uh, as Reverend Pinky said, to share with the entire community both our commonalities as well as our individual uh, uniqueness. Um, and so it's, uh, that's, a, that's an exciting service. One of, the part, one of the things that we model then before our community is mm -hmm. we can bring the, the barriers down. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. cross some of these great divides. And if we do it as the religious leaders, hopefully the community can see it can happen. Right, absolutely. You're so key, so important to our communities. And I, and I, and I know there'll be many, many more years of Papa working as a, as a wonderful organization, uh, bringing our religious community together and the community together and being a leader. So thank you both very much for coming on the program today. Good thank luck you. Thank with you. your gardening and everything else. And for those who would like more information or to volunteer, please give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so very much. Have a good evening. Thanks.